What's happening, Sonic community? My name is Cody Tang. We're gonna get a bit serious for this video. Be sure to share this video around or just keep it in your mind that any quote unquote opinions you hear from this guy are more than likely stolen from somebody else's video. I doubt that this video will get much traction, but at least it will reach the people who watch me regularly. You might have even come across this person's videos yourself and just didn't realize it. First of all, thank you for tuning in. I greatly appreciate all of your interactions, even if we disagree. The fact that you still come back to hear my opinions genuinely means a lot to me. Now let's not beat around the bush, because I don't want this video to be too long. This is the legendary Blue Hedgehog 5465. And this is the video where he stole my content. These are the two videos he ripped my script from. We'll call him LBH from here on out. I'll leave the link to his video and my two videos in the description below so that you can compare and contrast yourself if you want. And now let's talk about it. I've been on YouTube for quite a while now. To a decent amount of success, 410 subscribers as of recording, I've worked hard through the years, especially in finding time to make videos. My videos generally breach the 15 to 20 minute mark as I have loads of information and opinions on what I'm discussing and as a small channel, it's understandable that my longer videos aren't going to really be seen as valuable as a more popular YouTuber. So it's not surprising that most people haven't wanted to watch much of the information I give. I wouldn't say I've been as active as I would like to be, but I do care passionately about my channel, my opinions, and how my words are taken. For those that don't know me, my channel focuses on the writing done in video games, mainly the Sonic the Hedgehog series. I've studied writing for 15 years of my life, and I'm a big lore fanatic for many games. I do this every day, I'm always researching everything about the things that I love, so I'm very well versed on whatever I'm talking about. Now, if you love Sonic Prime, that's perfectly fine. I'm not here to dispute your love of the series, only to inform you all of a dangerous creator. I think we can all come together on the fact that copying somebody's video, slightly altering it, and then claiming everything in it as your own hard work is morally wrong and you don't deserve a platform by doing this. You just can't trust everybody, not even the people who subscribe and regularly watch you. I tried to go the pacifist route. I commented on his video telling him that he stole all my stuff and that he should delete it. I tried to find an email, couldn't find that either. I tried hopping onto his Discord since he left a public invite in the video's description, but I wasn't allowed in, and he has no Twitter link. I simply have no way to directly contact him because he won't respond to any of my comments. Since he barred me from any possible way of talking to him, all I can do is make a video. Because I'm a YouTuber, and that means I am awarded the right to cry about what annoys me. I even tried to make a post on Reddit about this situation to spread awareness about this creator and asked what I can do. Well, the mods of the Sonic community there decided that my post was not Sonic related. So I posted on a new Reddit, and they told me that legally, he can transform my content in any way he wants as long as he doesn't use my exact script through the whole video. So if he makes a profit on my research, well, that's just unfortunate for me. But that's the law. So, while I can't legally take his video down, there is a law that I personally can use. And that's called fair use, which is what YouTubers create our entire channels off of. So I'm making a video reviewing your video that uses my thoughts. How about that? Now if you discredited me as the source for your entire video idea, I probably wouldn't care. Send a link to my video and have all those people come right to me. I'm perfectly fine with that. Give me a shout out. I'm the reason you made that video. I've also created a clips channel. I understand that many people may not have time for a full hour long video on something, so I've shortened many of my major takes to easily watchable shorts. Each of these videos will contain links to the main video for all of those who wish to get the entire take afterward. And this video is of course going to start becoming inherently aggressive. Now it's never bothered me to be aggressive, but I've been trying to be nicer in not only my comment section, but also in my videos. I've cut down on the cussing and calling people stupid, so in this video I get to throw off all the restrictions and go full OG Cody Tang. So apologies to anybody who follows me, I'm about to get extremely passionate about my shit. I spent hours, days, months, years of my life making sure that I know what I'm talking about before I say anything. 
I make sure I have solid, well thought out arguments and make sure that my video editing is up to par for my current ability. So when some troglodyte steals my content using the same exact examples and images, you bet I'm not gonna take kindly to it. This is the case for anybody who tries to discredit me, steal my content, whatever you do. Especially when that creator uses my research and then has a video that outperforms everything that I've ever posted on the subject, doesn't credit me in any way with my own words. I won't stoop to your level of scumbag behavior, I don't know why anybody would want to, when your content is complete dog shit by itself, but you're not gonna like what I do next either. If somebody posts a response video to something I said, that's perfectly fine. I won't get mad at you for that. A steal from me? I got you bud. No need to get upset with me here, I'm just saying what you did. Alright LBH, from this video you'll see it's clear that you're on my dick heavily. You've realized that I have opinions that you find so mind-boggling correct. Opinions that you would never have thought of yourself. If you were ever challenged on any of these points, you'd sound like a broken record as you echo back what I said in my videos without understanding any of the nuances behind why I said what I said. Now I created this video for part 1 of Sonic Prime 5 months ago. I also made this YouTube short to promote the first video which only clips the part where I explain the timeline placement of Sonic Prime. Upon part 2's release, I created this video about 2 weeks ago. Both my videos have done decently well with 2000 views on part 1 and the short almost reaching 2000 views and 1000 views on part 2. So let's see how LBH is doing. This scumbag has 1.55 thousand subscribers. Now I have never heard this person talk about writing. Going through his YouTube channel and you can see that it almost entirely consists of Archie and IDW comic dubs. He has some wishes for future entries to the Sonic series and very brief, poorly thought out opinions on the games themselves. So the video in question isn't something he's presented himself as being well versed in discussing. LBH, I would have happily helped you animate some of your IDW videos. I think those are hella fun to do. It's something I do in my IDW reviews. Blank form data successfully copied. Looks like But my issue is that LBH has decided to take it upon himself to use multiple parts of my script. In some cases, it's nearly verbatim, while other times it's slightly altered to seem like he came up with the idea all by himself. On top of this, he even uses my exact examples and exact video clips. But don't worry guys, you don't need to check out mine and his videos yourselves. Let's do what we love to do on this channel and take a deep dive into how and why this guy's video is literally just mine repurposed. So let's get right into the first instance, which is the timeline placement, taking place at 1 minute and 4 seconds in his video. Let's hear the comparison between my script and his, and you can tell me if something seems, well, shit. Shady. The first thing, Shadow is in the show. So as we all know, Shadow appears in this show. Not too bad yet, right? That was just a little teaser. I can kind of hear the inspiration. Let's keep going. It has to be at a point where Shadow has already decided he's his own person. And since Shadow apparently knows who he is. Okay, okay, so again... Clear inspiration, but not an exact rip. It, he could actually feel this way. W what else do you gotta say, Cody Tang? Well, here's the stinger. The moment I heard this entire sentence, I knew this motherfucker heard me taking a shit in the woods, picked my feces up off the ground, and repurposed that turd to create this shitty imitation of me. Here's the first major red flag. So now, we're locked to After Shadow the Hedgehog, but then there's two characters that never existed until Sonic Colors, Orbot and Cubot. So now we're locked to After Shadow the Hedgehog, but then we have two characters that didn't exist until Sonic Colors, Cubot and Orbot. Whoa, whoa, could you repeat that? So now we're locked to after Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, one more time? We're locked to after Shadow the Hedgehog. 
How'd you say that, Cody Tang? So now, we're locked to After Shadow the Hedgehog. I do that whole thing together, guys. So, so now, we're locked, we're locked to, locked after, to Shadow after Shadow the Hedgehog. The Hedgehog. But then, but we then have two, two characters, characters that didn't that exist never until Sonic Colors. Until Sonic Cubot Colors. and Orbot. Orbot and Cubot. Gotcha. <laughs> Just making sure we're looking at the same page of my script. What are the odds that we would both say this exact quote? What are the odds that we would even both say locked to After Shadow the Hedgehog and then immediately jump to Orbot and Cubot? Oh, I'm sorry. You do what no Sonic fan does and instead flip their names to Cubot and Orbot. But you don't do this through the whole video because later on, you'll flip back to Orbot and Cubot. The color shows us that Orbot and Cubot. Just like every Sonic fan would call them. You call them Cubot and Orbot just to make sure that nobody can tell that you ripped that entire line and example right out of my video. Don't worry guys, it doesn't stop there. Oh no, it, it gets a lot better. Meaning that all the way up to Sonic Freeriders, which takes place after Black Knight. It means that every Sonic story from Sonic 1 all the way to Sonic Freeriders. Mm. <laughs> nice usage of my exact example. Well, you chose a better arrow than me, I must say. Nice choice. But you couldn't have even tried to use a different picture? You kept the same background picture that we both used for Orbot and Cubot, though. That's a nice touch, but that's because you don't segue into a full visual of the games in order. Likely because your editing skills are nowhere near the same as mine. Instead, you jump to my next point before we jump back to the same sequence of our videos. Gotta make sure to slightly put things out of order, otherwise I might catch on to the fact that you're using my exact script in order to write this video. This part comes out of order for our two videos, but they are actually the same quotes. So first he starts with the Sonic Colors example. Notice how he even uses my exact visual example, but just shittily zooms it in. They even make it clear in Sonic Colors that it isn't the first time Orbot and Cubot have been in combat with Sonic. The ending cutscene of Sonic Colors shows us that Orbot and Cubot have dealt with Sonic before the events of Colors. Interesting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> if you watch our videos, you'll see right there he tried to cleverly flip the placement of my script. Oh, hey, uh, Cody Tang, why is it that Sonic Prime can't take place right after Sonic Colors? The only reason it has to take place after Generations and not after Colors is because Sonic Colors links directly into Sonic Generations. Eggman meets the Time Eater while he was floating through space after the events of Sonic Colors. The only reason it can't take place after Colors is because the events of Colors lead into Generations. <laughs> This is like a game of who said it best. Now, I know famous actors love to ad lib stuff in, but you're not very good at it, are you? You're never gonna be a star if you don't stick to the script, man. In my video, I give that Sonic Generations example before I give the Sonic Colors example. In his video, he gives the Sonic Colors example and then gives the Sonic Generations example. Very clever, you sneaky sneak. I know, LBH, I'm pretty shocked I caught that one too. I could see the page numbers at the bottom of our scripts, so it was pretty easy to notice you just stapled them out of order there. <laughs> I know it's been five months since I uploaded this video, but you gotta give me some credit, LBH. Or maybe you wouldn't understand why I can catch my own script, no matter how much time has passed or how little it's been altered, because you don't write your own scripts. Before I give more, uh, borderline plagiarism, I just want to bring up an implication. Maybe you guys can help me with this. I just want to point out really quickly that he says he made a video about why Sonic Prime couldn't be canon six months ago, right? Well, I just so happened to have made a video about that same exact thing seven months ago. I'll link both of these in the description below. If you guys want to do some extracurricular activities, you know, get a little bit of extra credit points, you can compare and contrast my video to his. And you tell me if he has always been secretly copying me, to a much lesser degree of success that time of course. Let me tell you, I noticed some things there too. 
Moving on from the timeline, we get to now talk about why rings are such an issue in Sonic Prime. Anybody who has seen my videos about Sonic Prime knows very well that I absolutely detest rings being in the show almost entirely. So let's see what our friend LBH has to say about the rings. And I think I need to explain video game mechanics. Just because something happens in gameplay, it doesn't mean that thing happens in the story. To understand how storytelling works in video games, you have to first understand that things that happen exclusively in gameplay are not actually happening in the story. <laughs> What about the examples we both use in this instance? There's one in particular that ever so strangely, LBH felt the need to go into a bit of detail about, as opposed to the quick mentions he gave to every other example. Extra lives, invincibility, or shields that somebody has stashed away in the levels. Sonic doesn't get a checkpoint and then just spawn back there if he dies. So that means that Sonic doesn't go around smashing item boxes, he doesn't go to checkpoints and then respawn when he dies. Wait, isn't that just like my video? Huh. Hey Cody Tang. Didn't you talk about how rings aren't used in cutscenes? Do you mean that specifically chosen, exaggerated moment of Sonic getting killed in a cutscene? Yeah, the one with Mephilus. Or, at the very least, a bunch of rings would have popped out of his body and he'd scurry around as he picks up the rings he lost. He even died that one time, and we never saw rings fly out of his body. <laughs> how strange that LBH once again, just happened to use my exact example for the exact same issue. And it's the most extreme scene, which is Sonic's literal death, rather than a different scene, like when Sonic is brutally beaten in Sonic Forces, or when he gets thrown by a Titan in Sonic Frontiers. He could have chosen many scenes throughout the Sonic series, but for some reason, I can't quite put my finger on it, he chose the bit with Mephilus outright killing Sonic. This next quote is fucking hilarious. You're edging along some risky business on this one, LBH. This comes from my part two review. You know, the one that I uploaded two weeks ago. So this was fresh in my mind still. I immediately knew exactly where he got this from. Let's hear it for comparison. So when Sonic goes to the boss cage maze for the first time, he acts like these are the same guys he knew from New York City, which they are clearly not. They act completely different and they look completely different, yet Sonic still thinks those are the same guys from New York. Or what about when he meets the Jungle Gang and doesn't understand that they're brand new characters, donning entirely new appearances, not even acting the same as their New York counterparts? Oh, it gets deeper! He then jumps back to quoting my part 1 review in the hopes that I again wouldn't catch it. He does this to steal an example for why Sonic should already be prepared to see different versions of his friends in another dimension. Uh, let's see what Cody Tang and LBH have to say about that. Sonic at this point has been through dimensions or seen somebody jump through dimensions at least four times. Sonic Rush, Sonic Rush Adventure, Sonic and the Secret Rings, and Sonic and the Black Knight. If Sonic Prime was canon, that means that Sonic has already traveled across dimensions four freaking times. In Sonic Rush, Sonic Rush Adventure, Sonic and the Secret Rings, and Sonic and the Black Knight. Back to my part two video. This has to do with a writing trope known as the audience is stupid, where a character appears oblivious to everything going on around them and has to have everything explained to them, often multiple times, in the hopes that the audience will finally understand the explanation, because the author doesn't trust you, the viewer, to understand anything. Now, uh, for this one, it's definitely harder to tell, but I'm going to try and show you how he mixed my two ideas to create a genuinely unique take of his own. And I wouldn't have even thought twice about that had I not already known that he was just stealing directly from me. This is the 
only time in this entire video that he had to actually come up with his own example because he chose to combine these two video ideas. So here's his quote, and then I'll show you everything that inspired this idea. And that's my problem with Sonic in this show. Whenever he learns something, in the next episode he has to learn the exact same thing. Literally in the previous episode, Sonic learns that he's the reason all of this is happening, and that these aren't his real friends. Okay, keep that in your mind. Now here is everything that inspired that. We can go even further with the assumed stupidity of the audience. In part 1, we witness Shadow tell Sonic that if he keeps running, he'll teleport. And we already know that Sonic running causes the prism energy to act up, thanks to part 1's explanations on the topic. In episode 1 of part 2, we have to be told yet again by Sonic and Shadow that running fast causes the prism energy to act up, thus allowing Sonic to teleport. We already know this, so why are we being told this again? Sonic even already knows this. If Sonic learns something, then you should pretty much always assume that we, the viewer, just learned that same exact thing. So to explain it later, as though it's a brand new reveal to our perspective character, can be extremely pointless. But for some reason, Sonic isn't picking it up as fast as us. And when being so obviously transported to a different dimension, he still thinks he's in the one before, even though he literally just discovered that he was dimension traveling now, not even two minutes before he gets warped. This one's the kill shot quote that you can tell directly inspired what LBH would go on to say. Dramatic irony is not Sonic learning that he can run fast and jump through dimensions and then learning it again two episodes later. And here's LBH's quote one more time just so you can see how it all fits together. And that's my problem with Sonic in this show. Whenever he learns something, in the next episode he has to learn the exact same thing. Literally in the previous episode, Sonic learns that he's the reason all of this is happening, and that these aren't his real friends. That's how you avoid being accused of plagiarism. That quote required LBH to actually understand the full dynamic on why I was saying something. Of course he doesn't understand the specifics of it, but he understands the idea itself. And then, he was forced to put the ideas into his own words. So in totality of the video, LBH only has one original take of his own. Everything else is completely stolen from me. He did say one last thing before his video ended, and it's pretty funny how he just shoehorned this into the video, I have to say. So here's a little goof for you. In the final moments of LBH's video, he feels the need to point out that Sonic Prime just has too many action sequences. It has great action sequences, but the problem is, it has too many action sequences. Most episodes are just filled with non-stop action, and we barely have any time to breathe to develop the characters or the story. Well hold on Cody Tang, that's never really said in any of your videos. Oh, that's true! Here's why I find this so fucking funny. Everything in his video up to this point has been strictly about what makes Sonic Prime non-canon, right? So why does LBH randomly talk about the action sequences in Sonic Prime? Well, let's go to the comments section of my part 2 review for that. Here we'll find an interestingly specific conversation that took place between me and a fellow lore enthusiast named Some Other Stranger. Some Other Stranger says, Also, for its fight scenes, Prime's action is probably some of the best I've seen in mainstream 3D animated children's television. However, I noticed that with season 2, it was starting to get a bit stale. To which, I replied, The fights are all stale because there's no story for the fight. They just expect the situation to be the story. 
When writing for books, this is usually the exact problem writers run into with fight scenes. Majority of visual media makes the decision to have no story for their fights because spectacle can be cool. But I agree, Sonic Prime definitely overstayed its welcome with random fights with no story to follow while watching them. Now I know you guys are smart enough to pick on what just happened there. Even my own comment section isn't safe from being fused into LBH's INCREDIBLY ORIGINAL TAKES. And what's so funny about that is that the pointless action sequence issue that LBH is talking about specifically only happens in part two because in part one every single action sequence was tied to a direct plot point and we had an overabundance of time to learn about the plot lines and many of the major characters in the show to the point that the show was actually boringly filled with dialogue especially pointless dialogue See, LBH has no idea what characters I think are major characters to the show. What I just said is going to go completely over his head because he's missing the entire context of why I just said part 1 has less pointless action than part 2, and instead part 1 consists of more dialogue. All he knows is that me and some other stranger talked about the action becoming too much, so LBH ascribed that point to the entire show like a fucking dumbass. You see what I was talking about before? About how much of a moron you're going to look like when you don't understand the nuances to my arguments and instead just start tossing them around at people? Press LBH on any of these points and watch him try to weasel his way through these arguments. Try and press me on anything I say and you're going to get paragraph upon paragraph on how I came up with what I'm talking about and every single angle that I thought about in the process. And when you respond, you bet your ass I'm going to give you another set of paragraph after paragraph because every single thing I say in my videos has been thought about and reconsidered for hours, days, months, years all the way up until that moment that I pressed the upload button on my channel and deep into my comment section years and years later. I never stop looking into this stuff. LBH? You'd be hard pressed to find an original thought about something he enjoys. You will never be me or be anywhere near as thorough as me. You can take my words, but you can never replicate the passion behind what I say. Now just for the final nail in the coffin to end this video, I need to make completely sure that LBH can't weasel his way out of this and say he has no clue who I am. Here's several screenshots of him in my comment section having discussions and even praising me for making a video on Sonic Prime Part 2. What's funny is that he was one of the first comments when my video was uploaded. A subscriber of mine, perhaps even with notifications on, even came back five days ago to leave another comment discussing the change to his opinion on Sonic Prime. That was a day after uploading his shameless ripoff of my videos. Fascinating. Now, listen, LBH, I'm really touched that you find my words so inspiring enough to make a whole video using all of my research and personal takes. And then you say that you did all the research? Well, I agree. You did do all the research. Your research was my fucking video. What's that quote they always say? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Right. Uh, since you'll never get far rising to the top as a content thief, I guess it's not a big deal that you blatantly rip people off. But don't worry LBH, I get it. I can sympathize with a pathetic person like you. If you wanted to see what it's like to have a brain like mine around, you could have just asked. But since you didn't and decided to steal from me in an attempt to profit off my hard work and dedication, I'll make one last request for you publicly for you to prove that you're not a scumbag and you're actually just an idiot. Be happy I didn't go through all of the dog shit content you've been putting out before hopping on my dick. Delete your video.